This is going to be a review on the Diamond Cargo Trailer. The trailer that I purchased was an 8.5 by 16 foot cargo trailer. I purchased it from USACargoTrailerSales.com. There are a multitude of trailer manufacturers in Georgia. So when you go to do your research on buying a cargo trailer, it might be a little overwhelming because there are so many of them. So I figured I would list this one to give you a starting point on where to look. Now, if you go to the website where I purchased my trailer, they state that they have one of the biggest V-noses in the industry. Unfortunately, that's not true. I found that CargoMate has one of the biggest V-noses in the industry. So, you can make and draw your own conclusions from there. Now, if you purchase your trailer where I purchased mine from, and you go to their website, it states that their exterior screws will stand up to the harsh elements and they're stronger and more durable than screwless tape. That is absolutely correct. Until you move the trailer uh, about 10 feet off the property and then screws start popping out, as was the case with my trailer, as you can see here. Now, if you go to their website, you'll notice that they have a five-year manufacturer warranty, not one or three years like most trailer manufacturers. However, there is a little bit of a problem with that. If you look at the paperwork that comes with your trailer, it says there's a purchaser's obligation. In other words, the purchaser must complete and return the warranty card within 15 days of purchase to obtain warranty service. So what that means is if you find anything wrong, you have to pay for all services, including towing and transportation, in order to get it back to the trailer facility to fix it. Now, if you've picked your trailer up and it's a lot of mileage, unfortunately, you're going to have to incur all those charges to tow it back there or waste all that gas to get back there to fix it over something that may be minor. Now, if you look on their website, they state that they have a 12-volt interior light with switch. Keep in mind, if you got the LED upgrade package, it does not include an LED on the interior light. It's just a standard regular light. The other thing to keep in mind, if you get the LED package upgrade, it does not include an LED light in the license plate light. It's just a standard light. The other thing it states on their website is it comes with a molded plastic tag box. That's the other way of saying that it's just a license plate bracket. Now the problem with the license plate bracket is when you go to put your license plate on and turn your screw in, it will push up against the body panel itself and separate the license plate frame from the body panel. As you can see from where my thumb is and highlighted by the red arrow, the screw won't go all the way in and it pushes and separates itself. The good thing about Diamond Cargo Trailers is that they include a ramp flap for free. It's very durable and it works very well. Unfortunately, I noticed the piano hinge was bulged on the end when I was inspecting it. This was due to a screw not being seated properly. I tried to tighten it down and I could not do that. And the only solution to this problem is to replace the screw with a wider and a longer screw. You can see highlighted by the arrow how it split the wood itself. Here is another picture that shows the wood being swollen. Most likely this is due to the wood not being pre-drilled when they put the screw in. According to the website, Diamond Cargo Trailers come with marine grade paint. However, upon close inspection on the underside of the trailer, I noticed it was a very thin coat. As you can see, the wood grain is bleeding through the marine grade paint. So you may want to put some undercoating on your Diamond Cargo Trailer to make it a little bit thicker. Now upon looking underneath the trailer, I saw grommets protecting the wires in the steel frame itself. This pleased me until I looked further on the frame and I noticed that somebody had taken a blowtorch in order to make holes in the frames in which to run the wires through. Now I would have liked to see this throughout the underside of the frame but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. As you can see from the pictures here, somebody just took the blowtorch and cut a hole in the frame and ran the wires through. Now, over time, what's going to happen is you're going to get vibrations. It's going to cut through these wires, and then you're going to have a wiring problem, and you're going to have to rewire the trailer. I was hoping they would have done a better job, but I guess you get what you pay for. 
The other thing I noticed on the underside of the trailer were the shackle bolts. If you look highlighted by the red arrow, you can see that they welded the threads at the end of the bolt. So if you ever have to replace the shackles or the bolts themselves, you're pretty much screwed. I wasn't happy to see this. They could have used a cotter pin in this. They could have used a lock nut. Uh, there, there was many things they could have done, so it wouldn't have been so bad if you ever had to replace any of these items. The other thing I noticed while well, underneath the vehicle were the two brake lines sitting on top of the shackle that bolts the shackle to the axle itself. Over time with vibrations, these wires are going to wear. And nine chances out of ten, you're either going to blow off a fuse or you're going to lose your brakes completely, which in my opinion is not a good thing. The other thing I happened to notice was the grommets surrounding the brake lights themselves on the back of the trailer. The one on the passenger side was fine and it was about a quarter of an inch in. However, the one on the driver's side, the grommet itself was sticking out about a quarter of an inch past the body panels themselves. So it can catch on branches or anything else. I doubt this is going to affect much but it would have been nice if it was in a little bit more and it wasn't overlapping. The other thing I happened to notice was the vehicle identification number sticker and the trailer loading information, the two stickers were overlapping each other. Over time, these two stickers are gonna get moisture or water underneath them and possibly peel off. Now, I do realize this is cosmetic. However, all this information that you see is not located anywhere else on the trailer. So it would have been nice to see these two stickers separated from each other. The other thing I believe is worth mentioning is trailer tongue length. Now this is an option and I didn't go with it and I should have. Because if you don't get the extended trailer tongue, you risk jackknifing your trailer. Now this vehicle happened to move my trailer and as you can see the diamond plate looks beautiful. By the time this got to me he had jackknifed and didn't know his ass from his elbow and he ended up putting a dent in my brand new trailer. On the exterior of the vehicle I happened to notice that it was sheet metal that was sticking out in the wheel well as you can see here highlighted by the red arrow. So it wouldn't have taken much to cut this off but I wasn't too happy to see this and I had to do this myself. The other thing I noticed was the screws that fastened the body panels to the trailer themselves were stripped out or they were hand tight. I could tighten or loosen them by hand. So to take care of this problem, I went and I got myself a four square bit, which is an SO2. These could be obtained from multiple sources whether it be eBay, Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot, or you can even get them at Walmart. You can also get a T25 star bit as well. You can obtain these along with your colored screws that match your trailer themselves. Okay, this is the end of the review on the Diamond Cargo Trailer. If you are considering purchasing a Diamond Cargo Trailer, you can get them from multiple sources. Again, I have listed the website in this video and I have had really good luck dealing with these people. They've been phenomenal from start to finish. Although I don't agree with certain things when it comes down to the warranty and the craftsmanship, but the bottom line is you get what you pay for. Now, if I had a chance to buy another trailer from these people again, absolutely I would. Even though there were minor things that were wrong with the trailer, if you think this is an issue, shop around for trailers and look at prices and you'll end up buying from a reputable dealer like this as opposed to going to a local one for thousands more. As always, I offer any comments or suggestions and I'll try to address any questions as they come up. Thank you for watching.